So today's learning goal is about multiplying decimals. And though for those of you who noticed that this was not included um, in the last video, we're kind of, I'm kind of breaking up this learning goal, but it's still dealing with the learning goal that I can add, subtract, multiply, and divide decimals. So we're going to talk about multiplying decimals, like I said. Um, here's an example of a problem where you would need to multiply two decimals together. Um, it says, at a part-time job, you make $7.50. You work for three and a half hours, how much did you earn? So I can see that I'm going to need to take the amount that I make per hour, $7.50, and multiply that by the number of hours that I worked, three and a half hours. And since I'm talking about multiplying decimals, I'm going to write three and a half hours as a decimal, and that would be 3.5. So the problem that I need to do is I need to take 7.5, oops, zero and I need to multiply that by three point five. And I'm going to show you the traditional method of multiplication. If you want to continue to use lattice you can do that. Um, but the nice thing about um, multiplying decimals is it's not really any different than multiplying non-decimal numbers or integers. So um, I can set this up the same way. So if you want to set it up using lattice, go for it. And if you want to set it up using traditional multiplication, you can do that as well. Um, so I'm going to do this with traditional. So I am going to actually get rid of that zero because 7.5 is the same as 7.50. So that zero is not really adding any additional information there. So I'm going to set this up as 7.5 times 3.5. When I am multiplying decimals together, I do not have to line up my decimal points. What you actually want to do is line up your last um, place value there. So I'm lining up the fives. It's just a coincidence that the decimals line up, so that doesn't matter. And now I'm going to multiply this out. I'm going to pretend that those decimal points are not even there and that I'm multiplying 75 times 35. So I'm going to first take the top number 75 and multiply that by 5. So I'm going to do 5 times 5 gives me 25. And so I'm going to write the 5 down and then carry the 2 up here. And then I'm going to do 7 times 5 diagonally. So I'm multiplying the 7 on the top times the 5 on the bottom. 7 times 5 is 35 and I'm going to add that 2 that I carried. So 35 plus 2 is 37. I'm going to write that down. <clears throat> now, I'm going to take that same no top number, 75, and I'm going to multiply it by the 3, um, which, again, I'm pretending this is 75 times 35, so that 3 would be in the tens place. When you multiply by a number in the tens place, we always want to put a 0 down in the ones place first to show that, that, um, that there's nothing there. So I'm going to put that 0 there to show that I'm multiplying now by the tens place. I'm going to do the top 5 times the bottom 3, which will give me 15. And since I'm carrying again, I'm going to go ahead and erase that 2 that I started off with. And now I can carry the 1 from 15. I'm going to multiply 7 times 3, the top 7 by the bottom 3, giving 21, and add that additional 1, which would give me 22. Now, I need, I've done 75 times 5, which gave me 375, and I've done 75 times 30, which gave me 2,250. I need to combine those two together by adding. So I'm going to add those together. I'm going to do 5 plus 0 is 5. 7 plus 5 is 12. Carry the 1. 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 1 more is 6. And then I have nothing to carry, so this is just a 2. <clears throat> now, um, if I was multiplying two numbers together that were not decimals, if I was actually doing 75 times 35, I would be done. But since I was multiplying 7.5 times 3.5, I need to figure out where to put my decimal point in my answer. This is the final step when you multiply decimals. So I'm going to actually just count how many numbers in total do I have after the decimal point, including in both numbers. So in this case, I have two fives after the decimal point. So I need to include two numbers after the decimal point in my answer. 
So I need to have this number and this number coming after the decimal point so that I have two numbers after the decimal point, which means that my decimal goes right here. Hopefully it'll let me draw it in. So my final amount that I earned is $26.25. And so um, multiplying decimals is no different than multiplying whole numbers, except that final step where you have to figure out where your decimal point goes. Um, the this section of the book does talk about different ways to write a multiplication problem. So you have your traditional um, little X symbol, the time symbol, but we don't use that very often because um, it can be confused with an X once we get into pre-algebra and algebra when we're writing um, equations with variables. So we are trying to get away from that a little bit. Um, so some other ways of showing multiplication would be um, we can use a dot. 3.5 and it's a it's raised up off the bottom line so it's different than a decimal point and usually bigger that shows multiplication we can use a star or we can use no symbol at all and just have it in parentheses and that would also show multiplication I would like you to pause the video here and look at this first problem and then look at the second problem and see if you can figure out what those two problems would be and when you've worked that out, unpause the video. If I was to do the first problem, uh, remember, we're just going to write this out. 1.4 times 3.2. And I am going to simply ignore the decimal points and multiply this out. So I am going to first do 4 times 2, which is 8. And then I'm going to do 1 times 2, which is 2. And then I'm moving over one place, so I need to put a 0 as a placeholder. And I'm going to do 4 times 3, which is 12. So I'm going to write down my 2 and carry my 1 up here. Then I'm going to do 1 times 3 is 3, plus 1 more is 4. I need to add these together. So I get 8. 2 plus 2 is 4. And 4. Okay, so <clears throat> for the first problem there, 1.4 times 3.2, I notice that one number behind the decimal point and another number behind the decimal point. So my answer needs to have two numbers after it. So, oops. as I go over here and write this out, I know my digits are gonna be four, four, eight. Excuse my bad writing. And I need to have two places after the decimal point. So I need to put my decimal point right there. Now for the second num for the second problem, again, I am going to have the same numbers that I multiplied together. So I do not need to re-multiply this out. However, I do need my decimal points in a different place. So I notice I have one, two, three digits after the decimal point there. I go over here, I'm still gonna write four, four, eight. Now I need to have one, two, three places after the decimal point. So my decimal point is going to go here in front of the four. If I was to do 0 0.14 times 0 0.32, I would still have the same answer of four, four, eight when I multiplied that out, but I would need to have four digits after the decimal point, because I have one, two, three, four numbers after the decimal point here. So I would add a zero into the front and then put a decimal point. That's the only way to actually have four places after the decimal point. If I put a zero after the eight and put my decimal point in front of the four, that is not going to be four places after the decimal point because I could just take this zero away. So I need to actually have one, two, three, and then add one more in the front to four. So that's how that works when you're counting out the decimal places. Pause the video now to answer the free response question. 
Pause the video for your multiple choice question.